It seemed strangely inevitable that the slot machine-esque mentality of arcades would worm its way back into gaming in the modern era. It's back with a vengeance in the form of microtransactions, a system born from the industry realising that the pull of variable rewards was greater than the ability to say no to additional purchases. Simply having microtransactions in a game doesn't add a thing to its replayability, something that hit an unsuspecting EA with Battlefront 2 like a freight train carrying the collective soul to the Star Wars fanbase. The titles on this list, however, don't gain their immense replayability solely from loot crates and shifty revenue practices. Sure, some on this list do have crate drops, etc., but that's not the reason they're here. These games are immaculately designed from top to bottom to provide hours of pure, untainted replayability. I'm Rich from WhatCulture.com, and these are the 10 most addictive video games of 2017. Number 10. Assassin's Creed Origins After taking a year off, Ubisoft had created one of, if not the best received Assassin's Creed of all time. Unless Scott has changed his mind. Again. No, no, he's not at the studio door, I'm fine. A veritable XP grind is the main roadblock stopping you from blitzing your way through the main game, but thankfully Ubisoft had peppered the landscape with hordes of side missions, wildlife hunts, chariot races, tombs, and all sorts. So as much as these are a necessary portion of the main progression, you'll be quite happy to veer off the beaten track to solve a murder, subsequently plunging more hours into your game. Number 9. Destiny 2 Destiny 2 was a huge improvement over its predecessor. With the way the story is actually conveyed to the player being massively improved, people actually knew what on earth was going on. Top that with immaculate shooting, a great villain, and memorable heroes to fight alongside, it was a welcome sequel, but it still wasn't perfect. Imperfections aside though, Destiny 2 had a lot going on. From weekly resetting nightfall strikes and raids, there were bucket loads of hour chomping content to get your teeth into. With said solid FPS gameplay and loot drops, dumping hours at a time into Destiny 2 was similar to hooking up an eternal stream of pure candy to your bloodstream. Number 8. Nidhogg 2 as much as Nidhogg 2 doesn't stand up to the likes of Injustice 2 as a mechanically deep, fully rostered fighter, it does have the utter beauty of simplicity. Two players fight one-on-one -on -one and push to each other's goal. Simple, brutal, addictive. It boils down to pure digital combat. No frills, no buffs, just weapon versus weapon, skill versus skill. There are large broadswords clashing in mid-air, arrows being dodged, people being booted into the depths. It's fast-paced, fun, and definitely something to play locally with friends or enemies, or friends soon to be enemies, because that's what this game does. Number 7, Sonic Mania. If you watched our 10 best video games of 2017, you'll know that I'm quite partial to this year's completely intoxicating Sonic Mania. Further proving Sonic Team haven't a pissing clue what to do with their own IP anymore, veteran modder Christian Whitehead, Headcanon and Pagoda West Games meticulously crafted the best Sonic game of all time. The levels are beautifully designed both visually and mechanically, the music is practically orgasmic, and the nostalgia hits so hard it's like a kick to the balls you'll actually enjoy. Even after completing it twice, I'm still sinking hours into this game, replaying my favourite levels, and throwing the controller down to begin an impromptu dance routine when I reach Chemical Plant Act 2. Trust me, that shit is absolute fire. Number 6, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Oh, Scott is scratching at the studio door this time. F off, Scott! Shoo! Breath of the Wild was the first open-world installment of the series that forced you to explore every nook and cranny to progress. That makes it sound worse than it really is, as it was one of the most critically acclaimed games of all time. The entire game world is traversable, giving it an endless sense of playability, and making it, quite literally, one big level. Within this huge world lie puzzle shrines, mini-games to discover, flora and fauna to harvest and cook, and of course, Ganon being a big cloud of bastard. With stunning graphics, solid controls, and 12 million things to do at once, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild is in itself a reason enough to buy a Switch. Number 5. Fortnite After one particular Battle Royale game had, let's say, moderate success, there was no surprise that imitations were on the way. The first of the punch was Fortnite, a game originally intended for co-op base building and survival. The standalone Fortnite Battle Royale was released with a free-to-play model on numerous platforms to quite the success. While the base mechanics of land on an island, loot, shoot, and be the last man standing are still present, Fortnite was quite different to its main competition. With less realism and more of an arcadey nature, Fortnite BR was a success in its own right. Since it's one death and you're done, that just one more game mentality was positively abused. 
Number 4. Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. It may not be the first game of its kind, but Player Unknown's Battlegrounds has completely flattened the PC gaming landscape this year. Boasting 20 million players and knocking Dota 2 off the top spot to be the most played Steam game of all time, PUBG was bound to be imitated, as you've just seen. With a more realistic approach to gunplay, tight mechanics and horrendously addictive gameplay, the success of PUBG was no real surprise except to player unknown himself, Brendan Green, who is expecting only a few hundred thousand sales tops after a year. The game still has bugs and glitches and its optimization is down the toilet, but that doesn't mean PUBG isn't the definitive game of the battle royale genre. Number 3, Injustice 2. One of the few titles where a loot grind setup feels positively natural, Injustice 2 features thousands of cosmetics, abilities and new moves all inside mother boxes. Such a system means you can level up your characters alongside kitting them out at regular intervals. Alongside that, the fighting mechanics are about as solid as they could possibly be. Not only is the story mode worth a pop, the infinite possibilities of the multiverse mode grants hours upon hours of further gameplay. The concept of timed modes and items are pulled directly from shifty mobile gaming practices, but Injustice 2 utilizes them without feeling like they're bluntly manipulating the player. Number 2. Super Mario Odyssey Christ, you can tell Scott Telford wrote this list, can't you? With 999 moons to collect, Super Mario Odyssey takes you on quite the literal odyssey, from scorching deserts to atop skyscrapers, underwater kingdoms, and even all the way to the moon. Beautifully pulling together the star-chasing rush of Super Mario 64 and the wacky worlds of Galaxy 1 and 2, Odyssey presents you with the opportunity of giving yourself that smug sense of satisfaction 999 times. I wonder how many moons Scott's collected. I'm assuming quite a few since he's been a right smug git since Odyssey released. And number one, Cuphead. Technically, Cuphead's boss fights only take two minutes or so to beat, but half an hour to master the f***ing things and survive the whole f***ing two minutes! Cuphead is essentially the indie game of 2017. With solid gameplay and a banging soundtrack, the Studio MDHR visual masterpieces Trial and Error Foundations work a little too well. The immaculate and ridiculously varied boss battles are generously split up by sometimes excruciating run and gun sections, with the payoff of these being the ability to purchase buffs and abilities from the overworld's shop. Going back and rebeating an already beaten boss still scratches the itch of beating it the first time, which is handy because that's what most of my game time is spent doing. In fact, no one in the office is yet to properly beat it, and it's been out for ages. The payoff of beating Cuphead totally makes sense for all of those controllers you broke along the way. And that's our list. What game have you sunk the most time into in 2017? Let me know in the comments section below. Don't forget to head over to whatculture.com for more news and articles and follow What Culture Gaming on Twitter. I'm Rich from What Culture, and I'll see you soon. Hey guys, thanks for making it to the end of the video, aren't you a star? Don't forget to subscribe below, and also, the people who made this video, they're right here, so go and follow them and give them some love. If you want to see more content, there's probably some stuff flowing up above my head, why not check it out? It could be fun. I'm not your dad.